The pole dance has gone from men leaping from pole to pole in India to the sexiest thing you can do with a length of metal, debatably, to a legitimate candidate for inclusion in the Olympics. On the other hand, we may be a little well from seeing the lap dance alongside the 100 meter dash. <laughs> has always taken a monkey-like aptitude for endurance and strength. We think of the first acrobats to climb and do tricks on poles to be from China, but they actually took this practice from India. Indian men traditionally performed tricks on wooden poles that were thicker than those used in modern clubs. They would leap from pole to pole 20 feet in the air. Modern pop culture has an example of this. In one of my favorite movies, Ocean's Eleven, George Clooney and Brad Pitt's characters only add Yin to the team after watching him do just this incredible leap. They are not unlike typical strip club customers, watching bored and unimpressed at his climbing and tricks until he makes the jump. There were also dances done like this in some African tribes, where an engaged woman dances on a wooden pole for her future husband, symbolizing her fertility. This explicit dance mimics sex. Dances not unlike it were done in medieval Europe. The maypole from pagan and roman rituals involves women and girls dancing around a pole with ribbons and also symbolizes fertility. As pagan and roman fertility rituals go, this one's a little boring, but I'm kind of glad. I performed in a maypole celebration when I was in preschool. Pole dancing in America has its roots in the 1920s in what were called Little Egypt shows. They were provocative right away. The performers were Egyptian Arabic belly dancers who wore short skirts and lots of jewelry in a time when most women in the US were still wearing corsets. They gyrated against the tent poles of their performance tents to attract customers. The forebear of the neon sign of a scantily clad woman on a pole that is in front of many strip clubs today. An early famous pole dancer was actually Elvis Presley in his 1957 movie and music video Jailhouse Rock. He slides down the pole and does several tricks. If you don't believe me, check out the link at the end of this video. Not long after, still in the 1950s, pole dancing moved from tents to bars and combined with a burlesque scene. From the 1980s on, pole dancing became athletic again incorporating flips, spins, and climbs. It's worth it to note here that pole dancing doesn't just take strength, endurance, and sensuality. It's also the most painful sport I've ever immersed myself in. The metal pole leaves bruises on the legs, arms, and torso, especially when you're getting used to new tricks. And the amount of strength necessary to hold yourself to the pole with various body parts definitely smarts. These pioneers must have been absolute mavericks. These tricks started in Canada and moved to the US. Strip clubs were often raided and shut down, but the American public was insatiable for these shows. There is, as always, no stopping sex work. So regulation and zoning laws started to pop up that restricted how dancers could do their work. This fed pole work because it allowed performers to do their work and get paid without coming into contact with the customers. In the 1990s, pole dancing was already being taught as an art. In Las Vegas, still a popular place to visit strip clubs in modern times, by a former Canadian. The instructor, Fania Monday, is known as the first pole dance teacher, which I think kind of robs the people who were teaching each other in their clubs for decades prior. She was the first person to put out a DVD of pole instruction. From that point on, pole dancing was seen as a sport that could be viewed as sexual or non-sexual. Competitions are held outside of clubs now, and there are many gyms and dance studios dedicated to the sport. An application was made in 2016 by the International Pole Dancing Federation to have pole dancing recognized by the Olympic Committee as a sport. Pole dancing was notoriously absent in Tokyo, however. Today there is an effort to cut pole dancing off from its sexualized roots by people who enjoy the sport but don't want to deal with the stigma the dancers face. Instead of working to end that stigma and lift up their fellow dancers, these women contribute to the stigma by acting as though stripping is something to be ashamed of. Being mostly of the up and coming next generation of Karens, they look pretty silly doing it. It is not necessary to pretend that modern stripping wasn't birthed by belly dancers and strippers to legitimize it as a sport. In early strip clubs, dancers danced entirely on stage and were paid a wage. It was only later that dancers were expected to pay the club money and sell private dances as they do now. Con 
contact dances took off first in the side rooms of failing adult theaters. At a time when video cassettes allowed adult film seekers to watch in the obviously much preferred comfort and privacy of their own homes. I'm not a watcher of adult films myself, but I do know that there are things that most people would probably want to do while watching them that they probably shouldn't do in a theater. The first contact shows weren't one-on-one. -on -one. They featured two dancers and about 20 men, which must have been pretty awkward. One of the pioneering theaters, the most profitable, New York Live, had a very modern setup. A cabaret dancer did a three-song set in less and less clothing. Her final song performed nude. The dancers who were not currently on stage sat naked in customers' laps for tips. This was a one-of-a-kind experience at that time, and of course it took off, with men lining up to get in. The theaters hired dancers as fast as they could to keep up with demand. San Francisco was the first to declare that this was not prostitution, and from there it spread to other cities. However, cities in Canada and the US began cracking down on clubs that did allow sex and more sexual activities. Here again, a large range of restrictions rained down not just across state and federal borders, but from town to town. In some places, the dirty, dirty clubs are built just outside city lines or county boundaries because the difference in strictness is so great. In some places in Canada, dancers were waitresses who gave a free dance with every drink. I'm guessing those were some pretty expensive drinks, but alcohol sales were through the roof all the same. The first club was raided for being obscene, but was cleared, and other bars followed suit. These were not contact dances. Later rulings allowed for the customers to touch the dancers, but only if no actual sex acts took place. Ireland put its own spin on the strip club with the strip pub, because of course they did, and for a while they flourished, but they were heavily legislated against, and mostly cost more than those in the UK, so very few remain. In the US, lap dances are very much alive, though they take many forms, from some that offer lap dances that are hardly lap dances at all, with a six foot rule that requires the dancer to stay that far away, to places that offer full nude VIP or champagne rooms. A block of time for nude dancing and in some areas where oversight is particularly slack, a lot more, something we call extras. In some places, whether a dancer can be nude or give lap dances is dependent on whether alcohol is sold and whether the age limit to get in is 18 or 21. In most clubs in the US, dancers pay what is called a house fee, which is basically a nightly rent to even be in the club, and a portion of their earnings. Some see this as illegal, which is something that I'll address in a further video. So here's the fantastic, although ancient, video of Elvis Presley gyrating on a pole in Jailhouse Rock. And over here is a link to another video, The History of the Striptease. Over here is a link to where two of the Try Guys get a similar introduction to dancing than I did as a baby stripper. Like many new dancers, not just those who are male, awkward, and comedians, they often forget to point their toes. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. My link tree is in the description. Much love.